For the past five years, I've spent time exploring and falling in love with the Twin Cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis, Minnesota. I do have to admit, I've been a little unadventurous about exploring all the craft breweries the area has to offer. Yep, I've been here long enough to get a Minnesota twang, but not quite long enough to have visited the majority of the renowned tap rooms. All that's about to change though. Here on The Craft, we'll be touring some of these breweries together throughout the Twin Cities, exploring what makes this ecosystem the perfect place for hoppy creativity. You know, for years I had this idea that beer was this complex concoction forged by huge complexes with their huge horses and their impeccable lederhosen. I had no idea that it boiled down to just a few simple ingredients and that this is a craft that can literally be done in your basement or garage. So many passionate brewers have taken their skills to the next level right here in Minnesota, and it's become a cultural phenomenon. What's fascinating about Minnesota brewing in particular is that it has absolutely exploded in the past five years. Changes in the legislature made it easier for breweries to become serving establishments. Before introducing the Surly Bill, the old three-tier system was strictly enforcing alcohol manufacturers, distributors, and retailers to separate their roles in the industry. But after passing in 2011, that new law paved the way for Minnesota breweries, wineries, and distilleries to be able to serve patrons right in their own establishments. From what I've seen so far, craft breweries are not just all about the beer. In this scene, it's really about the atmosphere and each brewery's individual culture. It's something to gather around and nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. When I first moved to Minnesota, I noticed people were meeting up at coffee shops and bars. Most of those places have small tables, they're dark or loud, sometimes both. Maybe not a place you'd want to relax with your friends or try to meet new people. Now, everyone wants to meet up at a brewery. Why? Because it's meant to be a place just to hang out. Tap rooms are usually located in airy, bright, sunny, inviting spaces. You can play games, enjoy the sunshine when it actually decides to show up here, and see local artwork and music. You name it. I admit, when I first saw the casting call to be the host of a craft brewery show, I didn't think I stood much of a chance. First of all, in this male-dominated setting, it just seemed like maybe a female host wouldn't quite fit with the target audience. And secondly, I honestly don't know that much about beer. I know, right? I mean, beyond that the main ingredient is water and some of them are really bitter or bland and some of them taste like dreamsicles, I don't know too much. Committing to buying a pint of beer can be risky, so I tend to order flights and get a variety of flavors to suit my tastes. Then my next order is based off what I liked, unless I'm feeling lucky. There's usually a lot to choose from on the menu, beer is offered, and taps can rotate often at certain breweries, so I guess I can't be afraid to try something new. And ask your server what's popular or seasonal if you're not sure. You might be surprised at what's available. Now for us to truly dig into the Twin Cities beer scene, we're gonna have to do a little research, a bit of reading, ask a lot of questions, and I hope taste some beer. After rubbing elbows with all the right industry folks, we'll be on the path to better beer understanding. Am I gonna become a beer snob? I kind of doubt it. There doesn't seem to be that much room for that kind of thing around here. I know what flavors I anticipate liking, but I wonder how this journey will expand my palate and what new flavor combinations are out there. Let's soak up some suds. Over the past decade, the craft beer industry has boasted some pretty impressive feats of growth. It seems like every time I turn a corner, I'm discovering another new amazing tap room. There are nearly 7,500 craft breweries in the U.S. 1,000 opened in 2018 alone. Those breweries now directly employ over 150,000 Americans and affect well over half a million jobs. Small breweries boasted $76 billion in sales in 2018, an 11% increase over 2016, with 5% overall sales growth in that same year. The trend is no different here. There were 35 craft breweries in Minnesota in 2011 when the Surly Law was passed. Today, we're approaching 200. That is some amazing growth in this industry over a very short period of time. The Twin Cities are the epicenter for Minnesota craft breweries. There are so many new and iconic tap rooms here that it can be overwhelming, even for beer lovers. 
we'll be getting intimate with a handful of them over the course of this series. And with so many legendary destinations to choose from, there's no way we can go wrong. So gather around the bar with me as I talk to these incredibly talented brewers about how this stuff is made. We're gonna find out what all this hype is about and get to the bottom of a few cold ones. Let's all make a toast to the craft. Today, we are headed to Prize Brewing Company in North Minneapolis, located on the banks of the Mississippi River. In 2014, Jeremy Prize started brewing and distributing one beer out of a rented tank in a different brewery. When sales of Miraculum took off enough for him to expand, he asked friends and family for help, and the rest is history. Hi, I'm Diana. Hi, I'm Jeremy Price. Thank you for having us. This is beautiful. Welcome to Price Brewing. Thank you. What are we brewing today? We're brewing Miraculum. Let's go see. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. This is a this is an amazing space. I mean, this must have been such an undertaking, both the brew, the tap room, and all of this equipment. And it looks like it's pretty state of the art yeah, equipment. It's really nice. This is a single person can operate and brew the whole beer, which is really nice. Wow. So on a Sunday morning, if you're you're bored, you've got nothing to do, you can come here and brew. You can probably come here and brew. I'm sure you have your hands full, though. Yeah. How long did it take to get this entire operation from start to finish? From 2014, we started. Okay. Um, and then we basically brewed, sold it. We were uh, called the Gypsy Brewer, so we did all of our brewing oh. at a different place. Okay. And then from there, um, you're looking at about a year and a half ago, we actually were able to uh, get enough financing, find the real this beautiful space, yeah. and create the brewery, the production space. So we're going to let Jeremy walk us through making a batch of Miraculum. So what's going on here? So right now this is called our mash tun. And what we're doing is we're converting all of our starches to sugars. And so right now we're mashing in. And Wow, what is exactly going in? So this is our flagship Miraculum. Okay, so when you say that this is Miraculum, I mean, yeah. these, are, these are the grains that you have created, yep. this unique mix. And that's the basis of this beer, right? Correct. I really okay. see malt as being a backbone of the beer. Okay. And so this is literally the recipe that we have to make our flagship beer. That you made. Correct. So what made you decide to start a brewery? You know, when I was young, I used to be a cook. And it was so awesome just creating something for somebody to enjoy. Yeah. And so, and then after that, I got into IT. And oh. IT is very, uh, very night and day. Um, you yeah. basically have your process and you just stick to it. Um, I just really wanted that. I really had that thirst to create an experience for somebody again. So yes, it just uh, it came natural that beer is nice and what was oh. up, what was available. I just wanted to make a better product. So great. And speaking of products, where do you get your materials, your 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 ingredients? So our ingredients are our hops for our majority speaking. Um, they're from the West Coast. Okay. We do do harvest beers uh, that every fall harvest time for hops. We do do local hops. We come up with a hop harvest IPA, which is really fun. Fun. Uh, most of our malts come from BSG, which we um, actually get them shipped in here in big totes, and so. Okay. It's really, uh, it's really, we try to localize things as much as possible. Yeah, that's really cool that you have this desire to, to provide an experience, to provide service, and to be able to do it on your own terms yeah. with your own business yeah. is so cool. It is cool, and it's nice that, you know, when you have a glass of beer, I mean, it really is an experience that we're providing them. Yeah. And the fact that people in their hard days at work come yes. here to just relax just means the most to me. Wow. Look at these tanks. Okay, yeah. how did you get these in here? Look at how big they are. Yeah, it's a, it takes a little bit of finessing to get around the yeah. cooler, but yeah. uh, they do come in on their side, and then we have oh. to tip them up, and then we put them in place, and then okay. we, we trim them out and fill wow. them up. Wow, and so what are they doing? So after we take that hot sugar water, we cool it down with the exchanger, okay. we send it over here, and right now it's called wort. And so the big thing about that is as soon we have yeast pitch in there, and as soon as it touches that yeast, that's the first time it actually turns into beer. Wow. So this is where it ferments. This is so it's just in holding, it's just kind of hanging out until yep. it's ready yep. to be put into... No, nope. so what happens okay. is they'll be in here for about 10 to 14 days okay. uh, to ferment out. And okay. after they're done fermenting, then we will take it and filter it, and then we'll put them in what's called a bright tank. And these okay. bright tanks are what we use to carbonate the beer. So we force oh. CO2 in the beer, making it carbonated. Gives you that like 
fizzle on your tongue yeah. when you drink it. Wow. Okay, so it goes from here, presumably, to here. To, to, nope, here. to here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. And then, and then next is packaging. Wow, which is right here. Right oh next door. Oh, my God, how cool. Look at this. Are in your gorgeous space. Have you always wanted to do this? Did you know that opening your own brewery is what you wanted to do? You know, not not when I was a, a wee lad, but okay. um, it was just one of those things that kind of was the accumulation of putting uh, kind of my past history of work at working, and it was just one of those things that put the technicalness of being like an IT person with the creativeness of being a cook. So okay. when you put those two things together, I was able to use my past experience to really kind of you know, provide that experience for our customers and yeah. our fans. So you used to be a cook. You used yep. to be in IT. Yeah. One day you were like, that's it? Or, or is there, tell me the romantic story of how you made that decision. You know, you kind of go through life and you, you, you know, in your 20s, you kind of just explore the world and you just try, kept trying everything you can do and eventually something you're like, I like this. Um, and then when it comes to kind of like your early 30s, you kind of like, hone on those things and say what's functional, what's actually practical. And so when you come to your late 30s, which is where I happen to find myself right now, it was about taking those that practicality and and the creativeness and putting it together into something like this. And it's just, uh, it's amazing that people take the opportunities um, out of their lives to come here and kind of just enjoy a pint and just, you know, think about their days or it's yeah. just, it's awesome. So how did you come up with the concept for this tap room? It was just a, well, I can tell you right now, nothing came fast. Like this, oh. this was a very long thought out process. So if it's everything from like the feather bowling to the floors, to the ceilings, to the comfortableness of not hearing echoes in such a large space like this, um, I think it really just, it's nice that people come here and, and try different things and be like, this is a really nice warm space. It's very inviting. So it's really, really focused at just creating that inviting space that wasn't one way or another way. It just, it's a, it's incredible seeing so many different types of people here all the time. That's so cool. And it makes it such a community space. It is. Which it is, is neat. And yeah. I'm sure in the summertime, the patio will open up. It's fantastic. Oh my gosh. It's so nice. Beautiful. Right along the, the river. The nice breeze off the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's really wonderful. And especially right now, we're, we're really waiting patiently for spring to come back. So patiently. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love the color schemes. I love these tables. Uh, I mean, tell me more about, so if I understand correctly, everything here is sort of personal. Yeah. Okay. So the, so just in forming this company, um, I actually have friends that work for me, um, that work for Prize Brewing, and it's really nice about these tables. This is a, a friend made these for me. It's my friend Adam Peckman. Uh, he also has his company, Form From Form. Uh, it was really neat that as we were building up the brewery to take, uh, I've been friends with them for 20 years, and to have us come together and have our companies kind of work together, it was just, it's an absolute honor. Oh, how cool. Yeah. Wow. So there are a ton of beers on tap. Yep. You rotate them. How often? Uh, it just really comes to the variety of seasonal change. Um, the thing, certain highlight notes for different seasons bring different taste buds. Um, whether or not those beers make that time of the season really good or they complement that season, uh, it's really just trying to match with what people are feeling like internally. So right now we're looking at, you know, it's February and it's cold. Uh, we want a lot of multi beers, uh, beers that are typically a little bit higher in ABV, so it creates that liquid jacket to keep you warm. Mm -hmm. um, just really, just really nice things. In spring, you'll start seeing more citrus beers coming out, maybe some sessional IPAs, so that while you have a beer, you can still have a session IPA or a low ABV beer to still go do something throughout the day, which is really nice. That is nice. Um, when you start getting to summer, you start getting more juicy beers. Um, come to fall, then you have harvest time. You'll start getting all the uh, hop harvest beers. So. Uh, as hops grow, for the brewing industry, it's really exciting because this is where we take the hop right off the vine, mm -hmm. uh, throw it in a beer, and it's it's a wet beer. It's absolutely delicious. So it's a oh. occurrence. And then we come back to you know later fall, and we have pumpkin beers, spice yeah. beers, and rotate the whole thing again, and kind cool. of put our own mix on and tweak on everything. And it's just it's really fun. What are you most excited about now? That's either on your menu, or if I may ask, what might be coming to your menu? Uh, well, along with ales and lagers that we do do. Um, we're mainly an ale house, but the uh, big thing is we're doing wild sours, and so we actually have barrels that, through the inoculation of these barrels using uh, mixed cultures, um, to really bring that farmhouse beer back. We're just really excited about providing that kind of depth of 
flavor to cool. it. So cool. And do I understand correctly that you just won an award? One of your beers just yeah. won an award. Yeah, we're so, oh, it's not bad. <laughs> just got uh, just got notified that our raspberry sour, which actually um, just got placed in cans, so it's now located Whoa. at local liquor stores. Yeah. Just got a silver medal for a a fruited blender vice. So it's really. Really awesome. Blinder Weiss. That's yeah. a fun word to say. Yeah. What is that? It's a sour beer. Okay. It's a it's a beer that's sour in nature, um, and then the fruit just really kind of makes it more jump out more. So it's another ingredient to a beer. So okay. uh, the way the beer actually works out is it's a it's a sour beer, and we add raspberries. Um, so the raspberries are thin in flavor. And so okay. what we do is we add passion fruit to it. So uh, it actually goes sour, raspberry, and then passion fruit at the end of it. It's just really really delicious. Nice. And to go with all of the beers, there's also a kitchen in house, yep. which is handy. Yeah. So tell us about the kitchen. What is the? Is it a regular menu that changes too? Yep. The big concept behind the kitchen is that food trucks in the Midwest are fine, but they're not perfect. And so what happens is, like for example, it's freezing out today. Yeah. Right? It's single digits. Yeah. Uh, to be able to to go outside and order food, you get cold. Uh, by the time you get your food, your food's cold, you come back inside, it's just not the great experience. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring that concept inside. And so we had Red Wagon Pizza in for six months. Uh, we had other partners like uh, New Bohemia Truck Park. And it's just been a really good experience to help our partners that we have out there that sell our product to bring them in here and to get them to get exposed. And maybe you've never heard of certain places when you came here and then you'll go back and check out their place. So it's really a give take thing. It's really nice. It's, um, it's one of those things that with rotation, of menus gives other people experiences, which is really, yeah. really fun. It sounds like, especially too, with your culinary background, yeah. that providing a good experience is is a priority for you. Not only in the space that we're in, but in the products that you offer that you've created in your brewery and the yeah. products that are here in the kitchen, which yeah. is really cool. So it's just this huge cumulative experience. Yeah, what's really neat about that is the way we see beers, just like your, if you go to a restaurant and you order a meal or you come here, you order a meal, the beer is actually just an extension of it. It's like an appetizer. So it's it's an extension of your meal. So we feel like that whole experience is just very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the only place I've ever been where there's been feather bowling. I don't know anything about feather bowling. Can you expand on that? So we are the only place that has feather bowling okay. that's west of Michigan. And in Michigan, wow. it's the only place you can go. So uh, when it came to just traveling a bunch, I came upon this one place that had feather bowling. And I was like, this is incredible. Why hasn't anybody played this? Or yeah. never even offered it. So um, we have bocce here in the Midwest, mm -hmm. which is fun. But the problem with bocce is it's flat. So we kind of wanted to have something that was more fun, engaging, and something it was a new experience for people. Totally. So. Um, it's really fun. I just got back from Belgium, and the whole story behind feather bowling is that it started, as history states it, uh, the cheesemakers in Belgium would go out to the street, and on the side of the street, there'd be like a trough, and so what they'd do is they would stick a pigeon feather in the ground, take their spoiled rock-hard cheese, and play feather bowling. Oh my so God. So it's just really neat. So so it's uh, we're the only place west of Michigan and yes. west of Belgium. Exactly. Yeah, like right? There are two places. <laughs> yeah. How cool. And it definitely sets you apart from other breweries. Yeah. It's just, in it's interactive space. and it's something even, yeah. we have a table that's a spectator table so that oh. even though people are like, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to play at all, but they're like, I love to watch this play. And oh. there's not a moment in the day that, that it's not being used or there's laughter or people yeah. cheering and it just, it adds that another background to the tap room. Okay, so when I come here, I know nothing about feather bowling. Yeah. I'm going to be able to, there are directions somewhere, There are right? directions, okay, yeah. Okay, good. And there's also people that can help you out okay. and ask somebody and it's pretty fun. Good, because I'm ready to compete. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> So I've heard all about the types of beers that you have from our yeah. tour, but I have not heard how you come to name your beers. You've it's, got some creative names. Yeah, we, we try to come up with something that's original, but not too too quirky. Um, so Miraculin came, me and my friend were actually just hanging out and we just hung out to the later points <laughs> of the evening and eventually Miraculin because it's really hard to name names when everybody's taken basically everything you've ever heard. So you have to start getting very creative on just the word structure. Mm -hmm. And so Miraculum came about because it's a spinoff of 
of miracle. And miraculum kind of is like a made up word that people say it means to wander. And so it, it was neat. That's so neat. And you have another one, mass hysteria. Yeah, so mass hysteria or mass haze was came out because everybody's going so crazy and over these hazy beers. And so oh. we're like, this is like mass hysteria. <laughs> so we thought it was just a really cool play on it and to, to kind of show that what we think of the style. So it's really fun. And when is that beer released? Is that like a winter beer when we all have cabin fever and yep. it's mass hysteria? It actually just got, it's an <laughs> annual beer that we have, right? <laughs> Uh, we'll have it around all year. Um, okay. The cool thing is that we'll actually we'll start canning in the next couple of weeks. So we're really excited about getting that, and our pre-orders have just taken off. So we're we're excited about getting our our hazy IPA out That's there. That's great. Well, yeah. I can't wait to order a beer out, but I can't wait to try a beer here yeah. in a little bit. Awesome. So maybe we should go do that. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that was great. Thank you so much. Thank you for going on that. That was really oh, fun. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So right here is Miraculum. This is the beer that we saw from the start to finish. Okay. So yeah, let's let's see the beer. Okay. Let's give it a big smell. Okay. You get that nice citrus floral, just really entices you to want to try more of it. Yeah. It's just awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah, cheers. Thank you, cheers. So this being our Midwest IPA, you really taste the difference between the West Coast and the East Coast IPAs. It starts off citrusy grapefruit, and then at middle note, you'll get strawberry and tangerine, mm -hmm. and that dries out, and you get that nice multi finish. Thus, we call it our Midwest IPA. This is incredible. This whole experience has been incredible. Awesome. Thank you so much for making the time for me. I appreciate it. Not a problem. You're always welcome to come back. Thank it's you. great I'm having you. Thank you. I'm going to go play some feather bowling. Yeah, that's awesome. Maybe <laughs> I'll play with you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go sign up. Okay. Okay. <laughs>